Okay, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is John Schumann uh, with Invid Tech. Uh, thanks for joining us for the facial recognition setup slash utilization webinar. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Okay, so um, basically what we're going to go over today is uh, the setup and utilization process of facial recognition. So we'll spend about 10 to 12 minutes um, on how to set it up how to utilize it and and all that. If anybody has any questions at any point, um, we're gonna answer your questions at the end. So feel free at any point you have a question, um, you have the Q&A and the chat is open uh, via Zoom. So feel free to fire away any questions you have and we will answer them at the end. Um, so that's kind of just uh, what this is gonna be, uh, the format of this. Okay, so here you go. You can see my screen. Um, so one thing I want to cover first is what is facial recognition and what devices support facial recognition. So we have uh, facial recognition recorders. They end in the letter F. Okay, so here on our website under the products tab and under true facial recognition. So we have three different types of true facial recognition cameras. Um, we have a varifocal bullet a uh, fixed bullet and a varifocal turret, okay? So what is true facial recognition? So true facial recognition cameras are capable of capturing at a 98% um, capture rate. So you put these at your entrances, your exits, you're gonna capture a picture of the person as they walk into the building and it's able to do the recognition, which we're gonna cover today, okay? And then you also have um, your standard uh, facial detection cameras, which is what these AI cameras are capable of doing as well. So these cameras, um, they capture at about a 30 to 60% rate. Um, they do face detection and face capture. And we're gonna get into everything as far as what the differences are there, but these are two different types of cameras that are capable of doing facial um, detection. Um, these do facial detection and recognition. So if you're gonna be utilizing any kind of facial recognition, I strongly suggest getting one of these true facial recognition cameras because they captured a 98% uh, clip, okay? So I am logged into one of our demo units here. So I'm gonna get logged in. Uh, this is from the web UI that I'm doing this. Uh, so if you were to follow along on the local monitor, okay? I, you can see here, I have a function panel here at the top. So if I go ahead and click on function panel, I get these options here. This is essentially your main menu, your settings menu. If you were following along on the local monitor connected to your recorder, you have the circle with the four squares in the bottom left and go ahead and click on settings after you log in and everything from this point on will look pretty much identical. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my face recognition underneath AI event. So this is how you set up the cameras to do facial recognition. And after I sec select that, it's gonna load. I go ahead and select the camera that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our facial recognition camera here, okay? I'm gonna click on detection underneath face recognition, okay? And this is how I enable the detection portion of it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and check the box to enable uh, detection by IPC. So that's gonna enable the facial recognition detection. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my box. So this, anything in, inside this box is where it's gonna be looking for faces. Um, so for most most situations, you know, you can leave this pretty much um, the entirety of the screen if you wanted to. But if you want to cut something out, maybe cut out an entrance, cut out a monitor or something like that, that might be showing faces, um, anything like that, and you don't want any kind of misfires, you can, you know, regulate it and put it around the door area that you want or um, around a metal detector or, you know, whatever the situation may call for. So this is gonna be the area that it's looking for faces. You have your schedule here on the right, so I can go ahead and uh, put in any kind of schedule that I want for when this is active. So default is 24 seven. Of course you can do whatever you want there. You have a duration here as well. So your duration is gonna be your post recording. So this is how long it stays in a facial recognition event after the person clears out of the field of view of the camera, okay? So it can do as little as five seconds or as much as two minutes. Your face exposure, your face size, and and all this, really not gonna have to be messed with. Um, I don't recommend uh, playing with those settings too often. That's really gonna be 
be more for us um, or somebody on the engineer side, just to tailor your settings if uh, something's not working right. Okay, and then you can go to your trigger mode option here. So under trigger mode, you have your, you know, what happens when it detects a face. Um, I can do a litany of different things. So I can make a snapshot happen. I can make a push notification happen on my phone. So if it detects a face in an area, I'm instantly getting a notification. I can make a buzzer go off on the unit. I can make pop-up video happen, which uh, affects the local monitor. So if I'm displaying 16 cameras on my local monitor, let's say, um, when it detects a face in the field of view of this camera, you're going to instantly get pop-up video. So what that's going to do is going to pull that camera up full screen for you for the duration that you have the event set for. Your email notifications. Um, this is going to be your email notification for, um, you know, if it detects a face or anything like that. And then you'll save your alarm out. So if you wanted to to open up a door, set off an alarm, you know, the cameras have alarm outs. Um, so you can go ahead and select the camera that uh, you have the alarm out triggered to. Um, the back of the units also have alarm out. So I can select that. Let's say I wire it to alarm out one. I just move it over to here and hit OK. Now when it detects a face, it's going to instantly close that alarm out. Okay? Uh, and then you have your presets options here. So your presets, um, let's say you have a PTZ camera to the left and maybe another one to the right on one camera. Well, I can log into that PTZ camera, set up a preset to maybe look in the direction of this camera. So that way, when this camera detects a face, I go ahead and select my preset and associate it with here, hit apply. And then now when this camera detects a face, my PTZ camera is going to look in the direction that I have my preset set. Just make sure any changes that you make, anything that you do, you go ahead and hit apply in the bottom right. Okay, that's the detection portion. Now, the real benefit here is the recognition portion. That's the beauty of uh, facial recognition. So well, I'm gonna explain kind of what this does and how to set this up. So recognition, um, you're gonna wanna make sure you come into recognition and you definitely have a checkbox for successful recognition. You may wanna put a checkbox for stranger as well. Um, that's up to you, and I'm going to explain the differential here in a second. Okay. Once I put my successful recognition checkbox in, I'm going to make sure my schedule is set for 24-7. Um, and then I can choose the group that is going to be triggered with a successful recognition. I'm going to get into this more in a, in a second here. Okay. I can choose that when it matches somebody from one of my groups. So I have some set groups in here. I have a tech sales, and I have a test group in here. So if I just choose my test group, let's say, okay, I'm choosing my test group. Um, when is this active? It's active 24 seven. I can choose that when it matches somebody from that group, I can get a push notification. When it matches somebody from that group, I can get a buzzer. So same options here as the detection section that we talked about. And these are the same options. Okay, so what stranger does is if I check stranger as a box, if I don't, if um, it detects and snaps somebody that comes in that's not in one of my groups, well, I can make any of these trigger prompts happen as well, okay? So very similar to the, the detection process, but it's also gonna snap a picture of the stranger. Um, so over here, this tab, stranger, you wanna make sure that this schedule is set to 24 seven, so that way it's snapping people that are not in your database. If you don't want it to snap people that are not in your database, you would set this to none. And then I have a separate set of uh, functions for my stranger groups. Okay. Once that's all set up, you go ahead and hit apply. That can sound a little confusing. It, it'll make more sense now that we get into the database. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my face database. And over here is where you can create groups. So if I wanted to, I can create a group. I can name the group. Okay. It's going to drop the group in here. Um, and as an example, if I open up our sales group here, um, I have some faces loaded in here already. So these are people that are loaded into this database. Okay, so um, this is just an example of what it would look like if you had people loaded in already. Um, if you want to add a person's face, you can go to add face down here at the bottom. Um, I can go ahead and select the face that I want to add. So I can do a search based on faces that I have that it snapped already. And I can take any of these people's faces and drop them in. So I go ahead and take a face, 
and I hit OK, and it'll drop them into the group based on their name. And I just click entry, and then it'll drop that face in here. Okay. Once this face is in here, remember what we talked about. So when a successful recognition happens, if I had chosen my sales group for successful recognition, well, when that person walks in, I can get a push notification on my phone and it matches a person from that group. I can get a buzzer going off on the unit. I can make one of my alarm mouse trigger. So this is what it's talking about when it matches somebody from one of these groups. Okay, so that's how you create your groups. Now you can also batch load people in. We have a template for a CSV file that we can send out to you and you can batch load in via a CSV file. Okay, so if you have a bunch of photos of, let's say your employees and you wanna create an employees group, you can go ahead and load them all in on one shot. Okay, that's the setup portion, okay? So now, how do you utilize this? Well, there's a couple different ways to utilize this. If I go to my intelligent analytics, right? And I do a search under face. I, I, I do a search under face. I'm going to get all the snaps of the people that I captured um, for every single camera for the date that I'm searching. I can also choose specific cameras. Um, so if I want to choose specific cameras, I can hit more up here and I can only search for those, uh, those cameras. So it can really tailor to what I'm looking for. Okay. So um, any of these snaps that it captures, I can go ahead and click on any of the thumbnails. It's going to play the video clip of when it captured the person. Okay. Um, as you can see, so I can click on any of these thumbnails. It's playing the video clip here in the bottom left. I can check the box for any of these clips, and I can go ahead and hit the backup button in the bottom right, and it's going to back up the it's going to back up the clip. Okay. It'll back it up to my PC in this situation, but if I was doing this on the local monitor and I hit the backup button, I can put a USB stick right into the unit and back it up right to there. It'll back up a photo of the person along with the video clip. Um, now that's me doing a search on all events. Now I can do a successful recognition and this is gonna do a search and match anybody in any of my groups that I have selected. So if I look in here under the list function, saying that it's 95% sure that this is Nick from the group sales. And uh, it's saying it's 95% sure that this person is the same as this person. Okay. It's, you know, 95% sure that this person is the same as this person. Okay? And that's how that works. Okay. That's the successful recognition. And then if I do a stranger search, this is anybody that's not in the database could be some of these people you may see that are actually in the database it could be wearing a hat, they could be wearing a mask, uh, it could be uh, a side angle of the person. Um, so, you know, it's it's not cat, you know, not a clear photo. Okay. And then I can do a search by face. So if I go to by face here and I can take any of these people's faces, take Nick, for example, and I select and I do a search. It's searching today how many times it captured, captured them. And I'm doing this based on a 75% match scale. So I can drop this down if I want to. I can boost this up and get more accurate photos if I wanted to. So if I take this person's photo and do a search, I can go ahead and come in here and see, uh, you know, if he's been in my building previously or anything like that. Okay, I can also take any of these faces uh, that are not in my database, right? I can add them into the group right from here. So if I have a face that, um, is not registered into my database, I can go ahead and take it, hit the three dots in the top right, and then hit the register button. And I can register this person right into one of my groups right from here and drop them into whatever group I want right from the bottom. And all these things, all these functionalities that I'm talking about all, can be done from the phone app. So you can add people from the phone app. You can do uh, searches from the phone app. Um, you can take a photo of a person from your phone and load them in either from your gallery or a live photo. So a lot of different ways to utilize this. Okay, and that is the basics of facial recognition, um, setup process, and some of the utilization that you can do. So um, we're going to open it up for a Q&A now. If anybody has any questions, feel free to fire away. Uh, we have the Q&A at the top.
and also the chat box at the top. So feel free to fire away with any kind of questions that you have. All right. Well, with that being said, it appears to be no questions coming in. Um, I just want to thank everybody for their time and uh, take some time out on their Friday to uh, join us on this webinar. Um, Enjoy your weekend, everybody, and we will see you on the next one.